Hi, I'm John Stevenson. We're going to be looking at the Othniel narrative, Judges chapter 3. Judges 3, 1. Now these are the nations which the Lord left to test Israel by them, that is, the, all who had not experienced any of the wars of Canaan, only in order that the generations of the sons of Israel might be taught war, those who had not experienced it formally. So, uh, Joshua had brought them into the land, and they had initially taken uh, a good chunk of the land by conquest. But there are others that are left, and notice that they are left. Part of the reason here, it's not the entire reason, but part of the reason was that they might develop some sort of combat experience. Verse 3, these nations are, and now we have them mentioned, the five lords of the Philistines, that's along the coast, and all the Canaanites, uh, actually that's all throughout, and the Sidonians, uh, way up in north along the coast, and the Hivites who live in Mount Lebanon from Mount Baal Hermon as far as Lebo Hamath. And so we've got peoples, Canaanites, that are still living in the land. Verse 4, they were for testing Israel to find out if they would obey the commandments of the Lord, which he had commanded their fathers through Moses. Now we see a second reason. The first reason was for their battle experience. This is for their spiritual battle experience. Are they going to, are they going to follow the Lord, or are they going to rebel, or are they going to compromise, are they going to follow after other gods? Verse 5, the sons of Israel lived among the Canaanites, the Hittites, the Amorites, the Perizzites, the Hivites, and the Jebusites, and they took, here's the failure, and they took their daughters for themselves as wives, and gave their own daughters to their sons, and served other gods. That's the problem. It had been the problem way back in the days of the patriarchs. It's still the problem, and this is why the Israelites had been instructed to go in and not intermarry with the people of the land, because as soon as they begin intermarrying the people of the land, notice the last line, they begin serving other gods. It's a physical battle, but it's also a spiritual battle. Verse 7, the sons of Israel did what was evil in the sight of the Lord, and forgot the Lord their God, and served the Baals and the Ashtaroth, uh, the Baals that's masculine, Ashtaroth that's feminine, uh, these, these pagan gods. Verse 8, then the anger of the Lord was kindled against Israel, so that he sold them into the hands of Kushan Rish Athaim king of Mesopotamia. And the sons of Israel served Kushan Rish Athaim for eight years. Notice the name, uh, Kushan Rish Athaim, literally means Kushan of double wickedness. Uh, Kushan's the name, and then he's, he's this double wickedness. And that's sort of striking because he's king of Mesopotamia. Mesopotamia means Aram between the rivers. Uh, our, our word, Mesopotamia, means uh, land between the rivers. Uh, Aram Naharim, that's the Hebrew here, uh, Aram between the two rivers. And so you have the king of Aram between the two rivers. Um, not that the two rivers are necessarily w wicked, but his name means Kushan of double wickedness. Sort of a, a double entendre here. And of course, when we're talking about Mesopotamia, we're talking about the uh, the land that's between the Euphrates and the Tigris, uh, far to the east, northeast of, of Canaan. Verse 9, Then the sons of Israel cried up to the Lord. Uh, the Lord raised up a deliverer for the sons of Israel to deliver them. And here we find his name, Othniel, the son of Kenaz, a, uh, Caleb's younger brother. Verse 10, the Spirit of the Lord came upon him, and he judged Israel, and when he went out to war, and we're not giving any battle details, just when he went to war, the Lord gave Kushan Rith Athaim, uh, king of Mesopotamia, into his hands, so that he prevailed over Kushan Rith Athaim, uh, and then the land had rest for 40 years, and Othniel, the son of Kenaz, died, and the story's almost over be before it began, but what it has done, it has set forth the pattern. What we hear, what we have here is a paradigm, a pattern of redemption that's going to be followed in quite a number of our stories uh, throughout the book of Judges. And so we started off with rebellion, and then there was judgment, but then God sent the deliverer, and there was deliverance. And when we look at the paradigm of that redemption, 
we see our own story because our own story is that we rebelled against God and we were under God's judgment but then he sent his son not just a judge but a savior a deliverer who died in our place so that we might be brought back to God through him 